What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here with Jeff Fry from She Gone Hitting. He's got a great YouTube channel. I want you guys to go check it out. Link in the description. What I want to talk to you about today is something that happened in my experience when I was playing. Jeff is an agent. And what an agent is, I'll, I'll let you tell what an agent is. But when I was coming up, I didn't know what an agent was. I didn't come from a baseball family, but I had a great senior year. And I had all these scouts reaching out to me and people were telling me, you need an agent, you need an advisor. And I'm like, oh, I, do I need both of those guys? Or come to find out it's the same guy. <laughs> I just had no clue on the whole process. So I thought, you know, if I felt that way, I'm sure there's someone out there now who, you know, has the aspirations of playing pro baseball and just has no clue about how the process works or how to get drafted or just the whole thing. And since you're an agent and you were a player and I assume had an agent when yes. you played, yeah. can you just kind of tell us your experience, uh, you know, from you being an agent and you having an agent and coming up and just tell us, give us the whole thing. Yeah, well, I mean, when I was in high school and college, I didn't have an agent. I didn't need an agent. And really nobody back then had agents that I knew of, you know. Um, and after, once I signed in pro ball, our manager's college roommate was an agent. So he became my first agent. And he was my agent all the way up to I made the big leagues. Then um, I hired another agent. Um, that's a, another story for another time, but it's, it's a very cutthroat industry. Um, you know, it's a lot of times I tell people I'm too nice to be an agent, I'm too honest, because there's a lot of dishonest people oh, in bet. the agent game. But uh, for high school kids, they changed the rule about five years ago. You used to have an advisor, okay? And the role of the advisor was to basically relay information between the family and the professional organization. And five years ago, they changed it to where high school kids can now hire an agent. Oh, wow. They can hire an agent. Um, most agencies charge between four and 5% of the signing bonus. Uh, and they technically are not supposed to be the go-between between you and the team, but that's what they are. Right. Right? Right. Okay, why should a family who has no idea what the process is have to deal directly with a major league team who does this with 40 or 50 guys a year. So they have somebody who can help. Um, and that's what an agent does, okay? Now the rule is that if a high school kid decides to go to college, he then has to fire his agent and then he can become his advisor in college. Oh, so it's different for college. Yes, college wow. kids can only have an advisor. That's so crazy. I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's just the way it is. But and it's the same guy. It's the same guy. You're an you're an agent and you're an advisor. Yes, I'm both. And and you know, there's no paperwork. It's uh, it's basically a gentleman's agreement that I'm going to advise or represent your son and your family. And if he signs for a million bucks, you owe me four percent or five percent. Okay. And and what a lot of people don't understand is when a high school or college kid signs, right? They get their initial signing bonus. And they think, man, I got to give my agent 40 grand, or if I sign for 2 million, 80 grand, you know? Well, that agent's not going to make any money on you until you reach arbitration in the big leagues, which is three years, unless you're a Super 2, or you become, or you sign a multi year contract. So you sign at 18, you're going to be in the Meyer leagues for a high school kid, probably four to six years. Okay, during that time, your agent is going to buy your equipment, he's going to work on card deals. Um, unless you're a first rounder, you're not getting equipment deals. Right. It's basically your agent is allowed to spend two thousand dollars a year. Oh, there's a cap. I yep, didn't know that. For your equipment, and um, but unfortunately, the bad part of that is that every player thinks that once they hire an agent, now I get two thousand dollars worth of equipment. Right, right. Right. I mean, it's not you know Dick Sporting Goods. Right. right, right. You, you know, I provide for my players what they need to get through the season. Right. You know, you know, two or three gloves, maybe. That I mean. Oh, you're I, generous. Where yeah, were you when I yeah. was playing? I mean, for an infielder, sometimes <laughs> a pitcher, one glove. That's what I got. You know, a few <laughs> pairs of spikes, maybe batting gloves. But bats are the biggest cost. I mean, a dozen bats right. is a thousand bucks. Right. So that two thousand dollars doesn't go very far. And you're going through a dozen bats as a hitter in the season. Oh, especially when you first start out. Yeah, it's short season. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually had a client that I represented um, in junior college, and he goes and signs, and he tells me, and he signs for nothing. And uh, he says, hey, man, I need you to give me some bats. You know, that's coming out of my pocket, right? And I was like, man, they give you bats. Right. Yeah, but these bats aren't any good. And I was like, man, it's the arrow, not the Indian. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's not the arrow, it's the Indian. Right. And he goes, oh, man, these arrows are terrible. I was like, well, I'm not buying you bats. <laughs> and that, because my first year, I had to learn how to hit with a wooden bat. Right. We didn't have our own bats. Right. We had pro stock. You go through right. the bat room, the equipment room, and you pick two bats each is all you get. 
and you make those last as long as you can and when they break you get another one and you might have a you know p72 with the thin handle yeah. and it breaks and then there's no p72s left now i got a r r161 with the big head and the big handle right. but we learned how to hit right and we learned how to hold the bat the right way and not break it um so the, the, the bats are the biggest expense uh, when it comes to players. That's a side note too, make sure you always take care of your clubby. Oh that, yeah. Because then, you know, they're the one to say, no, get out of there, you ain't getting another one. Yeah, don't you be cheap with the clubby or you won't get the good stuff. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. sure. That's right, that's right. So now, like, you're, and some guys, you know, like, uh, uh, for, uh, is the standard minor league contract still seven years? Yes. So yes. you could, a guy could be going for a long time. Yeah, before, and seven years at two grand a year. Not to mention, you go see them, right, take right. them out to eat, whatever. Um, so, you know, and unfortunately, it's year to year contract, and your players can terminate your contract at any time. Right. So, and unfortunately, in this business, it happens a lot where you're with your agent who you had in high school and college, and then once you show a lot of promise, then the big the dogs big start coming. Right, right. And saying, oh, well, you've outgrown your agent. You, got, you know, so it's. You got to make sure you have the right clients. You want right. you want clients that are loyal, and aren't just going to go to the next guy who offers them something different. Because right. basically, most of the agents can get you all the stuff that you deserve. You, right. you, the equipment deals you get are because you earn them, right. not because he has some special relationship. And that happens a lot. Why is it important for a guy to have an agent? Like like you said, like like when I was first starting out, I was like. You know, I, the thought came into my head because when they said 5%, I'm like, why do I need to give away 5%? I could, you know, I'll figure it out myself. But my aunt, who's very business savvy, told me, no, this is a professional thing. You need to hire an agent. This is something that you need. And I'm glad I did because I had a great agent. I had an advisor who turned into an agent. He was actually awesome, took great care of me. And we stayed together until I was done playing probably didn't make any money off me I signed for 25 grand right so I don't I don't know what 5% of that is but um, you know I played for five seasons so he probably didn't make any money off mm. of me. but he was a great he was a great agent but why I guess what I'm asking is why is it important to have one as a player well not everybody needs an agent early on in your career honestly um, if you're gonna get drafted in the top 10 rounds with significant signing bonus it's very important to have an agent because they're gonna the teams now the way the draft is used to be that teams would just draft you and then try and sign you, right? Right. And, and they would, you know, confident in their ability to talk you into signing for the bonus that they wanted to give you. Right. Well, now it's, now it's slotted, right? There's a, there's a dollar value for each, each team, each uh, draft pick, and each team has a bonus pool, okay? So what parents don't know is if their son gets drafted in the third round, and it says the number for dollar value for the you know 92nd pick is 600,000 that doesn't mean you get 600,000 right. it doesn't mean you get even close to 600,000 you could get 200,000 or you could get a million right. okay so having an experienced advisor that knows how to negotiate and set these deals before they draft you which is what happens now the Texas Rangers calls you up and says, hey, will you sign in the third round for 600 grand? It's yes or no, okay? And if you tell them yes, and you change your mind, all those teams are gonna know you lied to them. So next year, when you're trying to get drafted, and, and they know they can't trust you, or maybe your advisor. So it's important to have an advisor that they know they can trust his word, okay? So. When I go in and negotiate, they're going to call up, and it's pretty straightforward. It's like, this is what we have, this pick. And I say, hey, we're going to need more. Well, what if we do this? Let me call you back. I mean, it's crazy. During the draft, it's crazy. Right. It's nerve-wracking, especially for kids that are waiting on the other line and their parents. Yeah. You know, will you sign for this? Um, but once you tell them you'll sign for that, it's done. You know, and, and I've had a lot of those situations where a player would say he would sign for this amount of money, and because of the way the draft was at the time, they were overpaying him for that position in the draft. So they had to wait till somebody before him signed. Otherwise, he signs for this 600 grand in the seventh uh, round, right, right. and this guy was going to sign for 500. Right. He's going to say, "Wait a minute! Right, right, right. How I get drafted before him, and he gets more money?" Right. So it's kind of a system where you have to 
You know, you have to scratch each other's back and say, hey, we're not going to sign until it's the proper time. So it's important to have a trustworthy agent that the teams feel comfortable dealing with. I've got a bunch of questions, not a bunch, but a handful of questions about signability over the years that I've been doing this. And when I was playing, when I was getting drafted, when I was getting, not drafted, when I was getting scouted my senior year, because I had a great year, um, and I don't know if this is the right way or it's supposed to happen, but the scouts would come to me mm -hmm. and say, hey, would you sign for this? And But I had an advisor. Yeah. And I, w I would, I would, usually say I because I didn't know I didn't know what to do and I would just say I just want to play at the net you know that was my typical answer I just want to play at the next level I love your organization you know I can't wait to be uh, whoever I was talking to whatever right, team right, it was, right. you know and that was just my instinctive answer to them but you know and I think they wanted to try to get something out of you so they knew oh, what yeah. kind of where they could like oh he's we can get him for 30 grand. We can draft him, you know, yeah, two, two rounds later. No one's really looking at That's him. That's the importance much. of having an agent. Right. So he, when I represent somebody, I go in and talk to the family and talk to the player and say, these are how you're going to answer these questions. Each team's going to send you a questionnaire, you know, and a lot of them are out of control now, right? All these questions. What round do you think you deserve to get drafted in? How much money do you think you deserve? And how are you going to know if you've never been through it? Right. right. So having an experienced agent who can walk you through the process and educate you on what to say to the teams, because a lot of times these teams are coming in because they want to get to know you. They want to act like they're your friend, right? Plus they want to see what you're about. Right. If you can't hold a conversation with this guy right. as a 19-year-old, how are you going to handle right. Major League life? Right. right? Yeah. So they want to see what your makeup is, what, you, you know, what kind of kid you are, and they watch everything you do, how you interact with your teammates. Okay, are you the first guy out on the field after the game raking the mound? Or are you in the dugout texting your girlfriend? Right. They watch everything. So as an agent and advisor, I educate the player on the do's and don'ts and what, you know, try to get them to, to make it to where the scouts want to get them in their organization. Let me ask you this. At what age do you recommend someone reach out to you or to a, a, an agency or an, an advisor if they have real promise, obviously, I don't want all 10th graders who want to play a major <laughs> league calling you after this video. They have to be a prospect, right? Yeah. But at what if they are a serious prospect, at what time do they need to get an advisor or an agent? I would think their junior year, probably, because, and, and sadly, there are kids in 8th and ninth grade that are getting advisors. They see these kids that have all these high rankings in perfect game and whatever, and so they think this guy's going to be a star, so they want to get in there early. So that means four or five years of following this guy when he's in high school. No guarantee that when he becomes a senior, he's not going to hire another guy, you know? So I, I try not to, to, um, to do that. I wait usually until a family contacts me or a scout says, hey, you need to talk to this guy, he's going to be good. Because I think it robs the kids of their high school experience, okay? He needs to learn how to be a good teammate when he's in ninth and 10th grade, okay? He needs to know how to interact with his team. He needs to focus on helping his team win baseball games in high school and, and learning how to win and learning how to accept losing, not just worry that is his agent here today. How come my agent didn't show up to the game today? You know, and, and he's distracted. He needs to be a kid and enjoy his experience. And I think a lot of times when they hire agents at that early age, it, it robs them of the experience. Let me, let me ask you this. If there's guys out there who are looking for an agent, and again, I don't want everyone blowing Jeff up here. <laughs> yes, and <this> call me. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, like if there's a guy who wants, even if they have questions, I'm sure you're happy to mm -hmm. help guys without you know like saying let's sign a contract or whatever. And there is no contract before that. Right. So if there's some guy that uh, is out there who was like me who doesn't know and just wants some more information, like where could they get a hold of you and and just maybe pick your brain about this whole process? Shegonsports.com is my email, and uh, I get emails all the time. Is that at Gmail or? Uh, Shegonsports at gmail.com. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I get a lot of questions. I bet. I mean, when <laughs> yeah. I started this out, I had 600 followers on Twitter, and I got 8,600. Oh, man. So I get a lot of people asking me questions on a daily basis. I try to answer them all, but it's getting more and more difficult <laughs> now. Uh, but I do do my best to interact with people, and a lot of it has to do with with kids that are in high school, what's the right steps, and, and a lot of times the path is just going to be chosen for you. It's going to happen. If you're good, they're going to find you. 
right. right? And you don't have to do anything special. Go to every showcase that's out there um, because the scouts are trained to find you. That's right. their job, right. you know? And if you're a good player, they will find you. Right. And so I, for the most part for parents, I was like, let your kids be kids. Let them enjoy playing because once they sign professional, it's job. Right. It's work. Either get it done or it's, you're yeah, fired. It's not fun and games. Right. And you, know, you fail, you're going home. Right. So let them enjoy it while they can because, you know, the odds are not good that many people are going to make it to that level. Right. Um, and I guess my last point for having an advisor and an agent just from my experience was like when I got drafted, I, I loved what my agent did for me. Um, and he was great. He took care of me along the years. But when I got drafted, again, I didn't know my signability. I, I would have went for anything, to be mm -hmm. honest. If they would have sent me a plane ticket and a glove, which they do to some people. Right, right. That's all you get. Um, but, you know, he helped coach me and guide me, and that was a huge part of it. But also, when we went to sign, I ended up getting the slot money for that round. But then, <laughs> and this is probably my fault, he was like, no, 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 we're not going to sign. I was like, yeah, I'm in. Like, uh, you know, uh, let's do it. I'm signing papers right now whenever you want me to. He was like, no, no, no. Let's see if we can get, because I didn't graduate. He was like, let's see if we can get your school paid for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I got so nervous. I was like, I didn't want them to take away the offer, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I told him, you know, he said, we can do whatever you want. And that's a great thing about an agent or advisor. It's, a, it's someone that you trust and believe in. And you just tell them how you feel and what you conversate with. And, you know, I probably could have got my school paid for it. But I was too, too nervous, too much of a chicken yeah, to go well, for it. Well, now it's pretty much expected that they're going to pay for your school. Oh, if you didn't finish, they'll take care of it. Oh, yeah. And um, especially if it's a high school kid and he's committed to Tulane, you know, or, or, you know, maybe an Ivy League school. I mean, that's a lot of money, you know. But what people don't understand is, and a lot of times they'll say, well, what if we just get our bonus and what the value of school is? They don't do that. Okay? Right. They're going to take the money and put it into a, a fund, and that money's going to be there if your career doesn't pan out. Right. Okay, but you have to pay taxes on that money up front regardless if you use it or not. And most kids don't use it. That's another great thing that you mentioned now that uh, you mentioned it, I thought about. My agent actually did my taxes for me because I didn't know, I was a young kid. I didn't know about that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I just sent him all my stuff and he filed my taxes. I don't know if that's something all agents do or not, but, or maybe he had a guy that he sent it to or whatever, but that was, that was cool. You know, that's another benefit of having. Yeah, I had agent agents that did my taxes and I had agents that didn't. Right. So it just kind of depends. Different. Well, thank you again for the great advice. Um, if you guys are uh, looking for some more great information, not just about agents and advisors, but hitting, fielding, whatever it is, Jeff's got a, a YouTube channel, like I said before. Check out the link in the description, click on it, head over there, hit the subscribe button on his channel with the bell so you're notified every time he posts a new video because he's got so much experience and knowledge in the game of baseball, you know, and it's free. You go over there and you, you get to pick the brain of a MLB guy, you know, and an agent. Like he's got, it's not just a hitter or a fielder. It's, it's got experience within the game as a whole. So go over there, check it out. You're not going to be disappointed. I promise you. Thanks again, Jeff. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.